Hello everyone, this video will explain what are HeLa cells and its importance among others. HeLa cells is the first continuous cancer cell line that it has been isolated from the glandular cervical cancer of a young woman. The cancer sample came from the cervix of a young black lady called Henrietta Lacks, a third-year-old mother of five living on New Pittsburgh Avenue in Baltimore. There is an ethical issue due it was not customary then to ask for written permission to obtain such samples for research purposes and there is no record that Henrietta Lacks consented to the use of her cells. The cell line is called Hella because it was taken from the first two letters of Henrietta Lacks' names, who was the donor. The breakthrough came on 8 February 1951 at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. George Gay was given a small sample and took it back to his laboratory. These cells are used to study the effects of toxins, drugs, hormones, and viruses on the growth of cancer cells without experiment on humans. They have been used to test the effects of radiation and poisons to study the human genome, to learn about how viruses work, and played a crucial role in the development of the polio vaccine. And in the mid-1960s, HeLa cells were fused with mouse cells, creating the first documented human-animal hybrid cells. Those cells, in turn, became important in the early days of gene mapping. Those techniques evolved over time into the fine-scale map of the human genome that emerged from the Human Genome Project. Some 70,000 studies have been published evolving the use of HeLa cells, and they are in widespread use throughout the field of immunology. At least two Nobel Prizes have been awarded recently for research involving HeLa cells. Why is HeLa so important? The characteristics that make these cells important are their rapid growth, the fact that they can reproduce without apoptosis, and their carcinogenic origin. HeLa cells have the ability to duplicate in less than 24 hours the ability to proliferate, with such a speed, it is believed to be a two mutation in a HBP genome. It is believed that this mutation had to close a proto oncogene. This is a gene responsible for encoding to the resources necessary for the growth and reproduction of the cells. This type of mutation favored the formation of tumors. HeLa cells can continue dividing size. They have a telomerized enzyme so active that it can regenerate it after having divided. Telomers indicate the cellular aging. The fact that they are cancer cells has made cells the victim of many mutations, and many of these variations can be advantageous when conducting a study. Dr. Gay was a prominent cancer and virus researcher. He had been collecting cells from all patients who came to the John Hopkins Hospital with cervical cancer, but each sample quickly died. Mr. Lack's cells were unlikely any of the others he had ever seen. Mr. Lack cells double every 20 to 24 hours. Normally, cancer cells will divide a few times and die off before any decent studies could be done with them. But Henrietta just keep on dividing and dividing, just so long as they were fed the right mix of nutrients for them to grow. He was the first to show in vitro transformation. He developed roller tubes for culturing cells. Because of the seemingly limitless lifespans of Lack cells, we now understand better how some cells manage to stay young even with the passage of time, usually a cell divide, either as a person grows or as the body repairs injuries. Dr. Gay went to a slaughterhouse in order to obtain plasma, which was taken by pungling a needle into a chicken's heart. Then, a trip to the labor where it was made to suck off human placental blood from umbilical birds. The mixture of these ingredients allowed him to grow the human cancer cells. Now, let's talk about the good of HeLa cell lines. HeLa cell lines are model systems. HeLa has become the main laboratory model system for cancer research. Also, because of the unlimited lifespan of the cell lines, it is possible to go back to the same cancer again and again. Another advantage is that in the laboratory, it is easy to select strains of cells that have specific properties using selective pressures, simply by altering the culture conditions. For example, we can select cells that grow in a suspension rather than attached to the surface, or cells that are resistant for some drug. Our knowledge of every fundamental process in human cells has depended on using HeLa cell lines as a model system. Also, it is possible to grow less aggressive cancers permanently. In fact, we can control the genetic drift and the phenotypic changes under strict lab conditions using standard quality control methods. Some of the main contributions of using HeLa cell lines are the vaccine and drug production and testing. All field of biology has developed by scientists in HeLa cells with various viruses, like HIV, herpes, Zika, measles, and mumps, to name a few, to better understand how battle them. One of the first applications was in the fight against polio. 
George Key and colleagues in Minneapolis showed that poliovirus grow easily in HeLa cells. Large number of cells were needed to produce the polio vaccine that Jonas Salk developed later. Another example was with human papilloma virus. In the 1980s, some HeLa cells were found to contain HPV-18 by Harald Surhausen, who later discovered the linking of HPV and cervical cancer. Subsequent work led to the development of HPV vaccines. Over time, using HeLa has contributed significantly in science. Thanks to that, we can do genome mapping. Harrison Watkins created the first human-animal hybrids in 1965 by fusing HeLa cells with mouse cells. This accomplishment enabled great advances in mapping genes to specific chromosomes and, in later years, the Human Genome Project. Another contribution was the counting of the chromosomes. Tijo and Levan developed a technique for staining and counting chromosomes, demonstrating that human somatic cells have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Also, we can understand how cells stay young and how are those mechanisms. In the 1980s, it was discovered that some animal embryos had an enzyme called telomerase, which protects chromosomes from degradating, allowing the cells to keep actively dividing. Then, in 1989, Greg Moring using HeLa cells to isolate the same enzyme in human cells for the first time. In the 1960s, HeLa cells were sent on the first satellite and human space missions to determine the long-term effects of the space travel on living cells and tissue. Scientists discovered that HeLa cells divide even more quickly in zero gravity. Also, HeLa cells have been used in a number of cancer studies, including those involving sex steroid hormones, such as estradiol, estrogen, and estrogen receptors, along with estrogen-like compounds such as quercetin and its cancer-reducing properties. There have been also been studies on HeLa cells the effects of flavonoids and antioxidants with estradiol on cancer cell proliferation. George Hay showed that it was possible to culture human cancer cells, and everyone was able to do it. Certainly, not only human cancer cells could be cultured, but also normal human cells. But of course, it was not that easy to establish a cell line from a human cancer. It, is, it soon became that many of the cells were not what they claimed to be. Monkey cells turned out to be human cells, and human cells were shown to be mouse cells. It took more than 50 years before the full problem was revealed. In 1967, Stangalter introduced the concept of biochemical polymorphism, the study of human cells. This concept comes from the fact that some proteins have several different forms, and these forms can differ in between an individuals. In 1962, the American Cell Culture Collection set off to collect authentic cell cultures, and Stangatler was supplied 18 supposedly unique human cells by the ATCC and other sources, and investigated the expression of the enzyme glucose 6 phosphate date recognized. Stangatler suggests that this perhaps all of these cell lines were HeLa cells. Scientists in dozens of laboratories have been careless and mixed up the cells. Too many people had writing grants and publication on the basis of the false cell lines from the ATCC to admit that it might be a problem. Stanglater has always felt that the identification of cross contamination is relatively unimportant, as any competent scientist can easily authenticate the cells. But because many scientists did not seem to be making these checks, one man went into an open battle to expose the problem. Walter Nelson in the 1970s developed techniques for the authenticating cell lines, with little consideration of the personal cost or of the sensitivities of the pe people whose mistakes and scandals he revealed. In the 18th, 1980, every human cancer cell, false or not, was held as suspect. So when Nelson Reels retired in the 1981, it was a battle one. The lines describe briefly are authentic HeLa cells, and there is no evidence that they contain any genetic information from any another cell type. A result of genetic drive and being subjected to different conditions in various laboratories, each strain might have genetic and phenotypic difference. 
The difference between the various cell stock level HEDA are probably as great as the difference between these various strains given different names. Within the last year, some of the false cell lines listed below were catalogued and sold by some cell banks under the false name and false description. HEDA KB the HELA subline KB was thought to be derived from an oral cancer. It was treated more than 300 times during the period 1998 and 2000 in Medline, and some of these studies used the cells as a model of a skin or a head and neck cancer. Few of the papers mentioned or seem to be aware that cells are derived from a glandular cancer of the cervix. HELA HEP2 the Hela subline HEP2 was thought to be derived from a cancer of the larynx. It was hidden more than 300 times during the period 1998 and 2000 in Medline and is frequently used in, by virologists as a human epithelial cell line. Usually, there is no mention that these cells are a Hela subline and are derived from a cervical cancer. Hela Wish, Hela AB3, and Hela FL. These three sublines of HELA were all thought to be derived from amnion cells. Despite their origin from cervical cancer, these cells are sometimes used in the fields of reproduction and in the chronology and are described as being normal human amnion cells. HELA L1-2 The HELA subline L1-2 was thought to be derived from normal human embryonic lung cells. These cells are sometimes described as being normal embryonic human lung epithelial cells. HELA INTESTINE 407 The HELA subline INT 407 was thought to be derived from human intestinal epithelial cells. Despite its origin from cancer of the cervix, it is still used as a model of normal human gastrointestinal cells. HELA CHANG LIVER The HELA subline called CHANG LIVER was thought to be derived from normal liver cells. Despite being cervical cancer cells, CHANG LIVER cells are sometimes used in the studies of hepatic cell physiology. As we said above, HELA strains differ from each other in a genetical level due to the different lab conditions where they are stored. The two most used HELA strains, CCL2 and Kyoto, transcriptomic and proatomic profiles, are as different to another as are cancer cells from two different types of tissue. The HELA variants also differ in how fast they grow in culture with some cells population taking 17.5 hours to double, whereas others took a little more than 32 hours under the same culture conditions. They also differ in their response to infections. The ugly. In the year of the 1981, the research and cytogenetics Walter Nelson Rees retired due to various reasons and some criticals, which will cause his cell line authentication techniques and his knowledge about the cross-contamination to be left without adequate supervision or control. It's currently known that approximately 20% of the HILA cell lines are incorrectly labeled. This causes mainly by interspices contamination. This problem has spread to another human cancer cell lines. It has been seen that some HILA cells have acquired certain properties from other cell lines by being in contact with these cells. However, there is no evidence that the contamination cells have a mixed parentage, hybridation, or present exchange of genetic information. On some occasions, HeLa cells can be useful model of some other tissues. Asking for cell line authentication before publishing information could be prevent the spread of erroneous data. This is authentic. This authentication can be accomplished using a DNA profile, which is a simple and expensive method. Another useful action carried out to reduce the percentage of incorrect information is the campaign to design the cell lines stored in cell banks, their current names and characteristics. This is important because 20%, about 20% of scientific publication may contain false data. The future. The importance of HELA cells has not decreased over time. On the contrary, they have become much more important since they represent the most researched and most widely used cancer model, and it is a perfect example of the consequences that a lack of revision can bring. And to this day, HELA cells have saved countless lives and many scientific landmarks, such as cloning, gene mapping, in vitro fertilization, the polio vaccine, 
have used Hella cells and know everything to the life and death of Henrietta Lacks. Also, researchers who use the data will include an acknowledgement to the Lacks family in their publication. There was, however, no legal provision for monetary compensation to the family. Nevertheless, the agreement is viewed as a moral and ethical victory for a family long excluded from any acknowledgement and involvement in genetic research the Rheumatric made possible. It was said by Kaplan in 2013. If you want to read the whole article, please log in through this page. Thanks for watching. I hope you like it.